Why hadn't a nuclear locomotive been created yet? People have been using small nuclear reactors to power large vehicles such as submarines and ships ever since the early 50s. So why can't this technology be put in a locomotive? When you think about it, it sounds very promising. A train that would only have to be refueled every 20 to 30 years and would also have no emissions. But there's a lot more to it than that. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how a nuclear locomotive might be designed and why none of them have been made. A nuclear locomotive would have to work like a nuclear power plant on wheels. In a nuclear power plant, the heat from the reactor boils water, which creates steam. This steam is then used to power massive turbines, which spin giant alternators that generate electricity. This is exactly how it would work in the locomotive. For the body of the engine, it'd probably be best to go with a cow type design. This would allow for more room to fit everything, including the shielding for the reactor. At the back of the engine would be the nuclear reactor, with thick concrete and lead shielding all around and in front of that would be a big steam turbine. Now, turbine locomotives have been made in the past, but they were dubbed too cumbersome and too high maintenance to deal with. And due to the nature of turbines, they were only efficient at max or near max throttle. But a turbine locomotive hadn't been made in over 50 years, so hopefully turbine technology has improved enough to where they won't be so high maintenance. As for the efficiency problem, I think a second, smaller turbine would do the trick. For low speed operation, you could have the smaller turbine run while the larger one is shut off. Of course, the smaller turbine would be allowed to operate at maximum speed so it can be as efficient as possible. Then when the locomotive starts to accelerate, the larger turbine would kick in. This way, no turbines running at low speeds. There would also be a clutch in between the drive shafts of the turbines so that when the larger one is running, the smaller one wouldn't get spun to pieces. And when the smaller one's running, it ain't wasting any energy spinning the large one. As for fuel, the locomotive would be powered by water and a nuclear core. All the radioactive stuff would obviously stay in the reactor, and all 5,000 gallons of water would be stored in the fuel tank, just like diesel fuel in a typical locomotive. The controls of the locomotive would also have to be modified. Instead of controlling a big diesel engine, they would now control a series of valves in the steam pipes leading to the turbines. This wouldn't be that difficult to do though. In order to keep the locomotive's alternator from being spun to pieces, a reduction gearbox would have to be put in place. This would take the high RPM output from the turbines and slow it down to a speed the alternator could handle. As for the nuclear reactor, those things don't run themselves so a third crew member would be needed to run the reactor. This means a cab would have to be longer in order to accommodate a reactor control panel. So, there's the basic operation of a nuclear locomotive. Water boiled by the reactor would flow to a small turbine at low speeds and a big turbine at high speeds, allowing for near maximum efficiency all the time. Those turbines would crank an alternator which would generate the electricity needed to power the traction motors and all the other electrical components. The main reason as to why a nuclear powered train hadn't been created is because it would be too expensive and too much of a risk. Even though nuclear power is statistically very safe, you always have to consider what could go wrong. Nuclear power plants are inherently dangerous and that danger factor would only increase if you were to send a nuclear reactor screaming down the tracks at 50 miles an hour. Just think if a nuclear locomotive were to crash and crack the shield and surrounding its reactor. Now you have a massive radiation leak on top of a train wreck. Or what if you had a nuclear meltdown in the middle of a city? That would be one heck of a catastrophe. Another factor as to why these trains haven't been made is because of the reactor itself. Nuclear reactors don't work so well on a small scale, and they're much more efficient when they're bigger. Also, refueling the locomotives and disposing of nuclear waste would be a nightmare for the railroads. When militaries have to refuel their nuclear-powered watercraft, 
It's a multi-year long song and dance that requires millions of dollars, precise planning, and mountains of resources. This is something that railroads just don't have access to and don't want to spend time on. The size and weight of the locomotives would also be a problem. With all that water and shielding, the engine would probably be too heavy for most rails. And the frame of the locomotive would also have to be quite long in order to fit both turbines, an extended cab, a gearbox, and the reactor. With such a long frame, this means that the engine would not be able to go through certain tunnels, which would further restrict where this locomotive could be used. I could go on and on for probably the next hour about why a nuclear locomotive wouldn't work, but I think you get the picture. While they sound promising and are definitely a cool idea, they would just be too much of a headache for the railroad to deal with. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other ones of mine. Till next time.